Earlier in February, we had a very cold snap. With the wind chill, the temperature was minus 35 degrees Celsius. Some other places throughout Canada were even colder. Anytime weather is like that, I always worry about my birds and try to help them out. But one little small black capped chickadee really had me worried. Close to my home is a flock of black capped and boreal chickadees that I feed regularly. Hi, Inky. In this banditry, I have named a few characters, such as Inky, a little one that has a very noticeable dark patch on his side. Then there is Dable, Spanish for dual. This guy can take two seeds at once. Fuego, Spanish for fire. This guy dominates everyone, which is not typical of boreal chickadees. And then there is Little Dimmy, short for Diminuta, which is Spanish for tiny. I named her that because she is the smallest adult chickadee I have ever known. For those who remember my favorite female chickadee, Tiny, from years ago, she's even smaller than her. All the chickadees dominate Dimmy, and to make matters worse, she has a bad foot. I've noticed that lately she keeps it up into her body almost always. I try to get her the food she needs, and it's no easy task when there are eight other hungry, healthy chickadees with two perfectly operating feet. When I got word about the cold snap coming, I started to worry about her being able to get enough food. So, the day before, I went out to bring some goodies in hopes that Dimmy would get some. She did, but not without a huge effort on my part. I have other birds, too, that are much further away, like Blue, Sweet Girl, Lentil, as well as many others that I won't name because it's just a lot. So, I couldn't devote my whole time to Dimmy. I made sure to leave food in the feeder and throughout the area and tree stumps and such. My plan was to get back home before sunset so I could see her before she roosted for the night. In order to see all the birds I know, I have to travel 6 to 8 kilometers in total. No stretch of the imagination. I know that I don't have to do this, the birds are very equipped and capable of getting through, but even still I worry. Thankfully, the temperature stayed relatively mild, and while on my way, I got to see a moose. Beautiful creature. She took the time to smell in my direction. I get the impression that she is quite familiar with my scent. Wasn't long before she ignored me and went back to eating what moose eat in winter. Twigs. Then my two best bird buddies, Blue and Sweet Girl, came out for their rations. Lentil, my little red-breasted nuthatch buddy, lives the furthest away. By the time I got to her, the wind and snow really started picking up. Lentil! Hi! It's not just cold that we were supposed to get, but snow squalls too, as if it wasn't bad enough. Oh, my. I'm glad that I visited her and the others, because the likelihood of me getting out here the next day, the frosty day, was very slim. Hey, Lenny. Hey, babe. I'm sorry. Nice. <laughs> Good girl. At least I could rest easy knowing that they, as well as Dimmy, have some extra food stashed away. When the blistering and blustery next day arrived, I was unable to stay in. I had to go out and visit Dimmy. I barely saw any chickadees and didn't see her. The time I spent out there was very short. It was so cold and blowing snow on top of it all. My fingers would freeze just 15 to 20 seconds after being exposed. I put some cracked up peanuts, seeds, and suet on top of the suet feeder and went in. Later, I went back outside. I had to check one more time. To my delight, little Dimmy came down and grabbed some food. With it being still so cold, I again left some food on the suet feeder and she took some. At least she was able to get something to eat. The next day was better, and she took the time to get what she could, eating some to fatten up and stashing the rest. It's clear to me that I've become important to her. 
When I came home later in the day, close to sunset, she was all alone and at the feeder. She excitedly came over to me the way a dog greets you when you come home after all day. Poor little girl, the only break she gets is when the others are not around. The day after was cold again, but Dimmy was able to get some food and at least it wasn't stormy. Girl, baby. My mind was made up on doing whatever I could to take care of this little girl. That was until I ended up not well myself and unable to get out the next day. I was heartbroken, but I could also see just how much my body was screaming for tender care and rest. I put myself through so much to keep up with those birds, and on top of it all, I have all my human things to do too. After giving myself some rest though, I was able to get back out, but I have to remind myself that I need to take care of me too. I'm not so good at that part. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to see Dimmy, but here she was, eager for some food. She seemed really puffed out to me though, but it is very cold again, like minus 22 degrees Celsius. I can feel myself starting to try going back to investing all of my energy on this little chickadee again. If I do, I will only hurt myself, so I have to be careful. I can only do so much. And our feathered friends are incredible, capable of keeping themselves warm in several ways. One big helping factor are all those pretty feathers of theirs which help to trap pockets of air around the body. These trapped air pockets are warmed up by the bird's internal heat. On really cold days, you are likely to see birds appearing to be twice their size. That's due to them fluffing out their feathers in an effort to trap as much air as possible, therefore keeping them really warm and making them look so adorable. Birds keep these feathers in tip-top shape too by preening them with their body's own oil that is secreted from a gland at the base of the tail. This oil helps to waterproof their feathers, keeping their bodies dry and warm. Very important in winter. Another thing that they can do to generate heat and stay warm is to shiver. Little guys like black-capped chickadees weigh around 10 grams or less than half an ounce. Even at 0 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 17 degrees Celsius, they can maintain their body temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. To maintain this, they need to eat continuously through the winter day, as much as 35% of their weight. Luckily, chickadees are super smart birds that prepare for winter by hoarding thousands of food items throughout their territory over fall. In fact, during this time, they even increase the size of their hippocampus, the part of the brain that is responsible for memory. This helps them to recall all those places they hid their food. When it gets really cold, they will also seek shelter in the trees. It's all pretty remarkable what they can do, so I'm trying to remind myself of this. But the food part is what's getting me. I don't know if Dimmy has been able to get enough food these days, between her bad foot, the other chickadees, and the cold weather that just won't let up. She should have plenty of cached food, though. So again, I stayed with her until she left for the night, and I suffered for that. It was so cold. A few times I felt like my fingers were close to getting frostbite. Leaving to go into my warm home, I could feel such a heavy guilt. All I could do was think of her. Will I get to see her tomorrow? What will her condition be like? All evening at home, I thought about what I could do and even flirted with the idea of getting her inside my home. How would I ever get her inside, though? That's when I noticed my nest boxes, all gifted to us from our good friend at Birds Walking Down YouTube channel. Maybe if I bring one out, I can entice her to go in it. Then I could bring her home and nurse her back to good health. At the very least, it could be a place for her to seek shelter from the elements. Am I doing the right thing here, though? I can't repair her foot, and no one here can either. Am I doing more harm than good? So many questions and I don't have the answers. But I know what my heart wants. It wants to help Dimmy. The next day I brought out the nest box, but she could care less for it. I also had the dome feeder all freshly clean with fresh food. She really seemed to like that. All afternoon she stayed. I left the nest box out just in case, but all it attracted was a foot of snow. The cold weather is supposed to let up a bit, and we are expected to get some really, really mild temperatures. Maybe that can be Dimmy's saving grace. 
February is over half gone already. If she can hold on until the warmer, longer days of March and April, she should be smooth sailing then. Right around when the mild weather came, I ended up with a cold and unable to get out there. With it being nice, I felt Dimmy would be okay. When I was feeling better, I went out in hopes of seeing her, but I didn't. As of this video upload, I haven't seen Dimmy for three or four days. The last day that I saw her, she was chased after by one of the chickadees. I don't know where she went or if she was driven out of this area, but her sudden disappearance can only mean that either she ended up somewhere else, or something like a bird of prey is the reason she's gone. It seems to me that Dimmy came into my life the way she did, as a way of teaching me a few lessons. To let go of the things I cannot control, to be careful when getting too attached, and to accept the impermanence of things. Trying to invest a lot of my energy and time into helping Dimmy has been a little hard, and my well-being was impacted. The level of love I develop for these birds out here is beautiful. Feeling that way toward them, I cannot help. But it comes at a price. Dimmy is teaching me how to not get too attached. How to approach these birds with a realistic mindset. For years, I've carried a heavy burden when any of these birds get ill or go missing. I'm exhausted from dragging those useless emotions along with me all of these years. It's time I learned to appreciate these birds in a different, lighter way. Relishing the moments I get with them, but knowing that one day they will be gone. This is how nature works, and it's how it has to work. Interestingly, another little bird that lives in the same flock as Dimmy, a red-breasted nuthatch named Meep, went missing a few weeks ago. Well, the last day I saw Dimmy, Meep returned. I was really happy to see her, and she's been here since. It's almost as if Meep was given back in return for sweet little Dimmy. Or maybe the fact that Meep showed up again after all that time is a message like, hang on, Dimmy might return again someday. So, if there's anything I've learned over the years of tending to birds that aren't doing as well as the others, it can be exhausting, frustrating, but a beautiful experience too. If done right with a positive frame of mind while also looking out for yourself, it can actually be nourishing to your soul. The word of advice I give is that nature is nature. It's tough. And sometimes, despite our help, things don't always go as we would like them to. I'm grateful to have had the experience I did with Dimmy. If she is still out there somewhere, alive, may she stand strong on both feet and live a great life. If she is gone, may her spirit fly free in the great cosmic space. On a more positive note, you can check out this other video I've done on my experience with taking care of a Baltimore Oriole that ended up in my location in winter, a place that it should not have been at all. Thanks for watching. Happy birding. Down into a box and brought her inside. I put a dish of water and her clementines in with her. Then I put a towel over the dome. The little one slept all night in peace and warmth.